This passage is adapted from Emily Underwood, Even in the Wild, Mice Run on Wheels. In 2009, neurophysiologist Joanna Mayer set up an unusual experiment in her backyard. In an ivy-tangled corner of her garden, she and her colleagues at Leiden University in the Netherlands placed a rodent running wheel inside an open cage and trained a motion-detecting infrared camera on the screen. Then they put out a dish of food pellets and chocolate crumbs to attract animals to the wheel and waited. Wild house mice discovered the food in short order, then scampered into the wheel and started to run. Rats, shrews, and even frogs found their way to the wheel, more than 200,000 animals over three years. The creatures seemed to relish the feeling of running without going anywhere. The study puts a nail in the coffin of the debate over whether mice and rats will run on wheels in a natural setting, says Ted Garland, an evolutionary physiologist at the University of California, Riverside. More importantly, he says the findings suggest that like some humans, mice and other animals may simply exercise because they like to. Figuring out why certain strains of mice are more sedentary than others could help shed light on genetic differences between more active and sedentary people, he adds. Even before Mayer got creative in her yard, researchers knew that captive mice are exercise maniacs. In laboratories and bedrooms, they frequently log more than five kilometers per night on stationary running wheels. But scientists didn't know why the animals did it. One thing was clear, they seemed to enjoy it. Mice find exercise rewarding, just as they can be trained to press a lever dozens of times to release a pellet of food, the rodents will go to great lengths to unlock a running wheel when it has a break on and get back to spinning, Carlin says. But is the drive to run normal or is it an aberrant, obsessive behavior triggered by living in a shoebox-sized case? Mayer's work seems to have answered that question. On average, the backyard mice she and colleagues observed ran in one to two minute stints, roughly the same duration as that seen in lab mice. The team also set up a second wheel in a nearby nature preserve of grassy dunes and attracted a similar crowd of enthusiasts. The animals kept running even when Mayer removed the food from the garden site, although they came in smaller numbers, she notes. Sometimes the rodents were so eager to run that they couldn't wait to take turns, she says. At one point, a large mouse sent a smaller mouse flying when it climbed onto the wheel and started running in the opposite direction. The fact that the wild mice and other animals were bold enough to enter the cage and use the wheel is very weird, but perhaps not as surprising when one considers that many domesticated animals also like to run on wheels, including dogs and chickens, says Justin Rhodes, a neuroscientist at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Although the common house mice observed in the study tend to be more leery of novel structures than other species, an evolutionary adaptation to the human penchant for building mousetraps, Garland suggests that the wheel may provide a more secure way for the animals to run than darting across an open field. There's something attractive about being able to get in a wheel and run unfettered. Okay, so... The main purpose of the second paragraph, lines 9 to 14, is to. So this is the second paragraph, lines 9 to 14. So this describes what happened when um, this uh, researcher, Johanna Mayer, when she set up her experiment, how the mice reacted, right? They discovered the food in short order, then scampered into the wheel and started to run. And, you know, over time, there were 200,000 animals that visited the wheel. So, report on some of the results of Mayer's experiment. Identify the factors that caused Mayer to revise her hypothesis. Emphasize the benefits to animals of running on Mayer's wheel. Rank the animals in Mayer's garden according to their interest in the wheel. So, this is A. This is just presenting the results of what Mayer set out to do. It's not factors that caused her to revise her hypothesis. In fact, her hypothesis was borne out by the result. Um, it's not the benefits of running that the animals experienced, and there is no ranking of the animals in terms of their interest. So A. 
The primary purpose of the passage is to explain the innovative method used in a study, summarize an ongoing scientific debate, discuss a research project and its significance, describe the development of a theory. So this would be C. Uh, the main purpose is to introduce the experiment that Johanna Mayer set about and why it was important, right? There was some idea that mice enjoyed exercise just for its own sake, but by conducting an experiment in the open and uh, conducting many simulations of that experiment over many years, Mayer was able to show that that is indeed true, that there is a predisposition among mice to exercise without a certain external benefit, right? So that is what option C says. It discusses the research project and the significance of the project. So yes, what Mayer did was use an innovative method. She did something that was new uh, by placing this wheel in the garden. But it's not just explaining the innovative method. The passage is going beyond that and looking at uh, what the results were and also bringing other opinions on the research, right? So it's not A. It's not just summarizing an ongoing scientific debate. In fact, it's kind of concluding that debate by saying that what Mayer did put a stop to these doubts that scientists had about why mice do this, right? Was, was it only because they were uh, in a cage, right? Or was it because they enjoyed exercise and would it happen even if they were out in the wild? So this experiment that Mayer performed answered those questions, right? So it's not B. And it's not the development of a theory. It's basically a question that was before scientists and that question was answered by Mayer's project. So C is the best answer. As used in line five, trained most nearly means. So if you go to line five, uh, she and her colleagues placed a rodent running wheel inside an open cage and trained a motion detecting infrared camera on the scene. So which is to say to focus, right? To get the camera to record what was happening, right? It was an infrared camera. So here the meaning of train would be focus because they focus the camera on the scene. They did not form the camera. That doesn't fit the context. You can't practice the camera on the screen and you can't drill the camera. So the best word for camera would be focus. Which choice provides the best evidence that the setting in which a wheel is placed is unrelated to the amount of time mice will typically spend on the wheel? Okay, 12 to 14, creatures anywhere, 38 to 40 on average mice. So 12 to 14, uh, creatures anywhere, 38 to 40, uh, 38 on average mice, okay. Then you have 41, 43, team enthusiasts, 46, 50, sometimes direction. The team enthusiasts and sometimes and direction. Okay, so we need to find evidence for the fact that it didn't matter. The location of the wheel didn't matter when it came to uh, the mice exercising, right? So option A, the creatures seem to relish the feeling of running without going anywhere. So this is just bringing out the result of the experiment. This doesn't really compare one location with another. So it's not A. On average, the backyard mice she and her colleagues observed ran in one to two minute stints, roughly the same duration as that seen in lab mice, right? So this is a good answer because it tells you that regardless of whether the mice were running in the backyard or in the lab, they seemed to perform the same level of activity. So I like B. The team also set up a second wheel in a nearby crowd preserve of grassy dunes and attracted a similar crowd of enthusiasts. Okay, so this is a new location, but again, if we go back to the question, uh, it is unrelated to the amount of time mice will typically spend, right? So we are not just looking at a new location, but we are looking at time. And so this one to two minute part in option B is better. And sometimes the rodents were so eager to run that they couldn't wait to take turns. 
At one point, a large mouse sent a smaller mouse flying when it climbed on the wheel and started running in the opposite direction. So this indicates the enthusiasm that the mice had for the activity, not necessarily the time they took. So B is the only one which says that the amount of time was the same. As used in line 21, strains most nearly means. Okay, so strains is here. Figuring out why certain strains of mice are more sedentary than others could help shed light on genetic differences between active and sedentary people. So you're talking about different species of mice, right? So strains here would mean species. So we don't have species as an option, but kinds would be the best fit. The different kinds of mice that were tested. We are not talking about qualities. We're talking about the different types of mice. So it's not B. Efforts is not relevant here. And traces, trace as a noun means the mark of something, right? For example, I need to ensure that all the traces of the party are removed before my parents return. So that doesn't make sense in the context of types of mice. So A. It can reasonably be inferred from the passage that if Mayer had placed an obstacle at the entrance of the cage surrounding the running wheel, the mice would likely have. Okay, so is this, yeah, this is evidence-based. Uh, become disoriented and started running aimlessly. Explode the area near the cage in search of another wheel. Lost interest in the dish of food pellets and crumbs inside the cage. Attempted to find a way around the obstacle to get to the wheel. So I think it's D, right? Because there is a mention in the passage that uh, they would like to get to the wheel regardless of the obstacle. So let's just work with the line numbers. 25, 26, even maniacs, 30, 35, mice says. Okay, so even uh, maniacs. Let me change the color of this so that I can distinguish it from that. Let's see if that works. So this was, yeah, it does. Even maniacs and 30 to 35, one thing and says. Forty-three to forty-six, the animals notes, fifty-one to fifty-seven, fat urbana champagne. Forty-three to forty-six. The animals and notes and 51 to 57. Okay, so we need to talk about how, regardless of an obstacle, the mice wanted to exercise. So even before Mayer got creative in her yard, researchers knew that captive mice are exercise maniacs. So this is just a general statement. It doesn't really tell me about how they go around obstacles, etc. One thing was clear, they seem to enjoy it. Mice find exercise rewarding, just as they can be trained to press a lever dozens of times to release a pellet of food. The rodents will go to great lengths to unlock a running wheel when it has a brake on and get back to spinning, Garland says. Yeah, so this um, seems like a good answer because it says that the rodents will go to great lengths to unlock a running wheel, right, when it has a brake on. So they want to go back to the exercise. They want to start exercising. So they will try and bypass any obstacle. So this is good. The animals kept running even when Mayo removed the food from the garden site, although they came in smaller numbers. Right. So this tells you that the chief incentive for them was the exercise, not the food. So this doesn't really talk about an obstacle. So it's not C. The fact that the wild mice and other animals were bold enough to enter the cage and use the wheel is very weird, but perhaps not as surprising when one considers that many domesticated animals also like to run on wheels. Okay, so this does talk in part about wild mice and other animals were entering the cage to use the wheel, 
right? But the main point is not that. The main point is that this is also seen in other animals like dogs and chickens. So I don't think this is the best answer. I would say B, option B is the best answer, which says that they want to bypass any obstacle to get to the exercise. So D for 25 and B for 26. Which statement is best supported by data presented in the graph? Okay, so I'm just going to look at the graph now. So percent of total wheel running by animal. Mouse, it was almost 87%. Slug, rat, shrew, frog, and snake. Okay. So the percent of wheel running by mice is roughly equal to the combined percent of all the other animals shown. Okay, so let's see if that's correct. So this is, um, no, this is definitely not correct because all of these are less than 10% and this is like a whopping close to 90%. So it's not A. Rats and shrews each accounted for a smaller percent of the total wheel running than did slugs. Okay, so rats and shrews were less than slugs. Yeah, that is correct. So B should be the answer. The percent of wheel running by house mice exceeded that of field mice. Um, house and field. Okay, so that comparison is not given in the uh, chart. So it's not C. Slugs were approximately half as likely as mice to run on the wheels. Uh, no, that's not correct because uh, slugs were like 7% and mice were 87%. So definitely not just half. It's B. Which statement best describes the relationship between the graph and the passage? The graph presents data collected during Mayer's study. The graph depicts the phenomenon that inspired Mayer's research. The graph shows competing interpretations of Mayer's results. The graph compares new information with Mayer's data. So this would be A, because we know that over a three-year period, uh, 200,000 animals visited the wheel in Mayer's backyard. And so this kind of tells you the distribution of those animals in terms of mouse, slugs, rats, shrew, and so on. So this presents the results of the study. Option B, the graph depicts the phenomenon that inspired Mayer's research. Uh, no, this is no phenomenon. This is just a representative data of the percentage of wheel running by different animals. The graph shows competing interpretations of Mayer's results. So there are no competing interpretations. It's just representing the animal's activity. And it compares new information with Mayer's data. So there's no new information here. In fact, the graph doesn't explain anything, which is why option A would be the best answer. Okay, so that was the last question. Let's grade this. Number 20. A, C, C, B, A, A, C, C, B, A, 25, D, B, B, A, A, D, B, B, A, oh, only till 28, okay, so we got all correct.